Hello, in this video we are going to see how to use query parameters in a checkout UI extension. This could be useful when you want your extension to show custom information depending on certain dynamic criteria that you can pass directly in the URL. For example, here I have the extension I created in the intro video for checkout UI extensions, where we are selling a product in checkout and giving the customer the option to add it to their card right away if they want to by clicking over here, pressing this added, and if I click over here again, the product is removed. This works, but has the limitation that every customer will be seeing the same product in this section. But now let's say that we are running multiple marketing campaigns promoting different products to different demographics using card permalinks, so the customer lands directly in the checkout page. In case you're not familiar, a card permalink is something like this, where I specify here the variant ID and the quantity, and if I click enter here, I get the, this product directly added to my card, which is the variant that is specified over here, with this quantity. But anyways, let's say that we are running multiple campaigns using these links. Regardless of the target audience of those campaigns, they will always see the same product here. And that might not be as effective because a product that might result interesting to someone in the 20 to 30 demographic won't necessarily cause the same effect in someone in the 40 to 50 demographic. So it will be even better if each campaign could be of selling a different set of products and that's what we are going to use query parameters for in this example. Now let's quickly recap what is going on in this extension. So here I'm importing these components from the Shopify UI extensions React checkout library because checkout UI extensions can only render components imported from there, as you can see over here. Then I'm targeting the extension point to be card line list render after. So after the items in the card, in this space over here is where the extension will render. Then I'm using this interface to store the variant data. And I have this hardcoded variant ID, although in the video I was getting it from the settings. But for this example, a, good, a better starting point would be just this hardcoded string over here. Then I'm storing this variant data in this state over here. And then I have also this is selected state. The is selected state is what controls this checkbox over here. Next, I'm getting the variant data in this use effect. So when the component mounts for the first time, if there is a variant ID, I get the variant data by running this Shopify admin API query. And then when it selects the changes, if the item is selected, I add it to the card, else I remove it from the card. And if I don't have a variant ID or variant data, I return node. Then all of this over here is just UI code for rendering the extension, which is what you're seeing over here. I will link in the previous video in the description and in a part of the top in case you need to check that out. As over there, I go in plenty of detail on how to create everything over here. Now let's see how we're going to use the query parameters. So basically a card permalink looks something like this, where we have the store URL, then card, the variant ID, the quantity, and checkout. But over here, we can keep adding parameters. The one we are going to use is attributes. So something like this, and then over here, we're going to specify the attributes key, and then here it's value. So attributes key value. In case you're not familiar with them, card attributes are information in the form of key value pairs that we can attach to the customer's card, but that is not directly visible to them, unless we want it to be the case. We can then use this information internally for multiple purposes, such as what we'll do in this video, which is personalizing the checkout experience. Now, going back to the code, let's start by getting the attributes using the use attributes hook. And then from here, let's start by getting the title attribute because we are also going to customize a title using an attribute. So, attributes are fine because attributes over here is an array. And then from here, I'm going to get attribute. And if attribute.key is equal to app title, I'm prefixing this title with app, although you can change this to any prefix. The idea is that you prefix this with something so it doesn't get confused with a title attribute that a store might be adding for some other reason. But anyways, from here, I'm going to get the value, which is optional because an attribute is not always present. Then here, I'm going to remove this and instead replace this with title attribute. And then if it is not defined, I'm going to use the previous string that was here before. So now I'm going to refresh this and nothing should change. But now over here, 
if I replace this key with app title and then the value with this is a test title and I copy this and navigate to this I will see this is a test title because it is reading this from this query string parameter now let's get the variable ID so I'm going to add another attribute in this one, I'm going to call it app variant ideas. And this will be equal to, I'm going to paste this variant ideas that I got from this store. So this is a valid variant ID. This is a valid variant ID. And this one is not. And this extension should be able to handle both. So let's see how we can do that. First, let's copy this whole URL and let's paste it over here. And now, Let's get the value of variant IDs from here. So I'm going to say variant IDs attribute will be equal to attributes that find attribute, then attribute key is to be equal to a variant IDs. And from here, I'm going to get the value. And if I get the value, I'm going to split it by comma, because over here, I'm separating them by comma. And all of this is optional because this attribute could also be undefined. Let's print the value that we got. And let's see if this is working. So if I open this console, over here, I get an object. Then I get the array with the variant IDs that I specified in the URL. So this is working fine. Now I'm going to get the variant data for all of these variants over here. So as we now have multiple variants, let's add an ID to this interface. The next step will be to over here now accept a variant ID as a parameter, which is a string. And the variant ID, we now have to prefix this with global ID, Shopify product variant because previously the variants were coming in this format with all of these already but now that we are passing them in the query parameters we are just passing the numeric part of the id so we have to prefix all of this part which is always the same regardless of the variant id next i'm going to change the return type of this previously we were returning void now we are going to return promise of either variant data or no. And now here, instead of setting variant directly, what I'm going to do is, if query result that errors, I'm going to throw in query result result that errors, else I'm going to return query result the data that no. Then I'm going to remove all of this. I save this, now we don't have this error. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm now going to create a homosynchronous function of get variance data. And this is the one that I'm going to go from here. If I have variant ID's attribute defined, instead of variant ID. So from this, I'm going to say results will be equal to await promise that all settled. I'm going to say variant ID is attribute, but not get variant data. I'm using all settled because there is a chance that this function throws an error. And if I use promise.all, if a single one of these function calls through an error, all of the other ones will fail. With all settled, I am able to get the results of the one that succeeded, even if some of them failed. So now I'm going to say, Filter results will be equal to results dot filter item item dot status is fulfilled and item dot value is different than no. Then I'm going to map this item item as promise fulfilled result of type variant data dot value let's save this 
So it forwards. I forgot to close this part of the system here. And we got the field of results. Let's see if this is working. So I'm going to print this. Field of results over here. I'm getting two items. And I'm getting two, even though I pass three, because this third one is returning null. Let's see if we get this little somewhere over here. The printer, but I can print it over here. Also, the bug, the result. If I pass an invalid ID, it won't throw an error. It will just return null. So I think there is this one over here. And this one is the nice one. This one is the default title. And this one is the node null. This one is from this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ID. As this an invalid ID. Now let's modify this to store the variance data. So variance data and set variance. And this will be an array of varying data. And now from here, as we will discuss on the log, and from here, we're going to do set variant data set. Variant C set variant data to be this. So variant data to be consistent with the state name. So variant data will be equal to filter results. Now from here, I'm going to say if variance, if there is no variance data, and all of this over here, I'm gonna cut it. And I'm going to say variance data not map. Variant data, and I'm going to return all of this. And the key over here can be variant data that I did. If we now check how this looks like, we see our two products listed over here. And if I change the URL to remove one of them, for example, this one, I can copy off this, and I should only be seeing one of them now. There we have it. Now, this still needs an adjustment because the selection is still assuming that we have a single product over here. So if I click on this, both of them are selected, but only a single one is added to the card. So this is still a bit buggy. Let's fix this. Now we're going to get if the item is in the card, so count is in card will be equal to card lines. Let's find card line. And then we're going to check card line does merchandise ID is equal to variant data dot ID. And we are going to replace this is selected with is in card. And we have to convert this to Boolean. So this now works. Next, we are going to change the logic for selecting items. So I'm going to be copying all of this over here. I'm going to remove this. Now I'm going to create an asynchronous function. So async function handle upsell product click. I'll type over here. And from here, I'm going to get binary D, a string. An easing card will be a boolean. So I'm going to use these parameters to get them in the function. And I'm going to paste this here. And if easing card, what I'm going to do is remove it from the card. So this will move up. This part over here will move up. And if the item is not in the card, then I'm going to add it. So over here on press, I'm going to call. Handle upsell product click, and I'm going to pass over here variant data in ID and easy card. And if I save this, I refresh this page, let's see what we get. This is still not working, but let's see. Okay, part of it is still showing an error, so each child must, must have a unique key. I'm going to fix this in a moment, but let's see why. This one click is not working. 
is this getting here? See? Divide the mean using count. I refresh this. Divide the D is undefined. So that is why we're getting an error. Did we data query to get the variant ID? We didn't, and this is why we are not getting that part, and this is why we were also getting the error that each key must be unique. Now, this appears to be working because this item is in the card, and I get the checkbox in this one, but this one is not, so it doesn't have the checkbox. But if I click on it, now it's in the card, and it has the checkbox, and I can click, and I can click again on this one to remove it, so this is working fine. And lastly, let's do some cleanup over here. So I'm going to remove this, remove this, remove this. Here I'm going to remove the settings. So I'm going to the settings. In this instance, this comes to the blog, I can also remove it. And this one, I can also remove it. So if I refresh this, everything seems to be working just fine. And by adding this product over here, we discovered this small issue. Well, if an image has a different aspect ratio, we are going to see it extended instead of contained as it shows over here. So what we can do to fix this is to add your aspect ratio to be one and fit to be contained. If I select this, now I get this looking exactly how it is over here, just a bit larger because these images are a bit larger than these ones. Hope to see everything in action now. I'm going to copy this one over here. The title, I change it to Offset for Promotion 1. And if I paste this here, I'll get this title. And now, if I copy this other link and paste it over here, I'm going to get option for promotion two, where I'm just upselling a single product, and it is a different one from the ones we were selling a moment ago. So you can share this link in a marketing campaign, this other one in a different one, and sharing that customers in each see an option section according to the campaign. And of course, you're not limited to just two. You can have as many of these links as you need to, because as we saw, the extension is flexible enough to support it. Now, while this solution works, it is not perfect, and let me show you why. So let's complete this order over here. Let's use a test credit card. Let's click on pay. Now, in Shopify admin, by clicking on the order here, you can see the two attributes that I added through query stream parameters are here. And while they were not visible to the customer, they are still visible to the merchant when they see the orders page. In this case, I only have these two, so it is not that big of a deal. But if several apps were using this technique, or if I had an app that added like five or 10 of these on each order, then this could become an annoyance. Ideally, there will be a way for apps to clean up the attributes they added for purposes similar to what we saw in this video. But unfortunately, the use apply attribute change hook, which is the one that can change card attributes, right now only supports adding or updating attributes, but not removing them. So uh, what we saw in this video works, be aware that it has this side effect. Something else you should be aware of is that as this is just a regular URL, the customer can change things over here. In this case, anything they change will be rather inoffensive as changing the title is just cosmetic for them to see, and changing the variant IDs will show different products in the offset section, but they will still need to pay the regular price for them if they want to add them to their cart. However, if you were storing something like a discount percentage, for example this, nothing will prevent the customer from adding an extra zero over here to get the product for free. So don't store anything in these query string parameters and attributes that you wouldn't want the customer to change. And that's it for this video. If you found it useful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify related content, and I'll see you all in the next one.